There's been lots of shows based around stories and emergencies of firefighters, paramedics, and police officers. One of the early series I remember watching was Rescue 911. William Shatner hosted it. They did reenactments based off real life cases. There were a few comedy drama series like Diagnosis Murder and Reno 911. Today we have shows like 911 and 911 Lone Star, covering all departments that deal with disasters. But one show I thought was really interesting, it focused on the paramedic side of rescue teams. All what they go through on a daily basis. Except it didn't pan out. It sadly died after only eight episodes. The network didn't have faith in it. The series was called Rescue 77, created by Gregory Whedon. You might know him from a small series called Highlander, the franchise that has movies, an animated series, and a TV series. Plus, the man was a real firefighter and paramedic himself. Still, they didn't help. In a lot of these shows, we always see the heroism side. The leads do everything in their power to save lives, get through insane situations, but they don't always look at what they do between jobs. What happens to their personal life? Do they have personal lives or personal traumas? That's what gave Rescue 77 a different point of view. The series takes place at Fire Station 77 in Los Angeles, featuring three paramedics, Michael Bell, Wiki Lobo and Kathleen Ryan, as well as their captain, Durfee, Richard Roundtree, the Shaft himself. The show never gave him a first name. The episodes usually play throughout an entire 24 hour shift of the crew, shift change to shift change. Things like what do they do when the next team comes in are shown. A paramedic is on call for 24 hours. That's hell on your sleep pattern. The first thing we see is Wick in bed late. He's the goofball of the cast, the guy who's always tries to keep the mood light, running around the house, putting on his clothes while driving. Good idea, dude. His wife's just barely awake in the bed, not giving a crap. I can imagine how many times he's done this. The whole station house is waiting on him. They can't call in till all personnel are on site. The pilot walks us through the character, so it's light on the rescue part mostly broken into segments, but they cover different types of situations. So if you were thinking the series would just focus on paramedics that just give CPR, going to the hospital and stuff, nope, it's more than that. Wick is mostly the eyes of the audience. He's the rookie, new, but not totally new to the station. So Wick tends to get in trouble, including being accused of stealing someone's candy bar, then going into a duel with the fire hose, Western style, winning? Then at the end, he actually did it and didn't care. He can be that kind of a dick. It's because of what they do all day. You're either bored out of your mind, so you do things to keep you entertained, or you're constantly leaving without getting a break. So everyone ends up on edge and pissed off. Captain Durfee, there's little to say about him. He's the by the book leader who has to round up the kids. It's a tough job. He will listen and see it from your point of view if you have issues. But if your job is compromised by something, he'll let you go. He has no time to deal with it. But he's not a total hard ass. If something like the stupid fire hose Western battle happens, he goes along with it. Durfee didn't get much character through the eight episodes. He mainly leads the fire crew. He was Yoda. Moving on to the top lead, Michael Bell. I guess you could say he's the show's Captain Picard. You could see he's the level head of them, but not totally. Bell's been going through a few things himself. His father doesn't approve of his job. Most people see paramedics as a dead end. Even Durfee sees it that way. I was surprised by that. Michael tries to have a relationship with a nurse, but the hours damper really any kind of involvement. They were forced in one episode to go on a date in front of the firehouse. I like Bell. He played around, tried to take things not always serious. You can see he did it to keep him disconnected from his work. You're going into life and death scenarios, seeing people killed in depressing ways, it puts a toll on you. That's another thing I liked about 77. The WB in the 90s had a lot of shows feature mostly family dramas. Rarely did they go for this type of realism. They showcased some really bad times the team went through. Bell also gives Wick slack when he does stupid crap. He's your boss friend that'll cover your back. The team isn't all roses though. Several weeks ago, their third partner, Kathleen Ryan, was removed from duty for six weeks due to one of their calls going really bad. A group of kids were 
killed while they were trying to get to them. Ryan has issues getting attached to cases. She felt it was her fault the kids died. Blamed herself, tried to do more shifts just to bury the pain. That's why she was forced on leave. It's a thing she struggles with through the whole series. There's another episode where a kid got trapped down a drain pipe. The water was rising and she opted to die with him rather than leave him. Of course they got saved at the last minute, but it caused huge problems for her and Belle. If you can't trust Ryan when making certain calls, it can get you killed. Even Belle started acting the same way. It took a lot of effort for everyone to get on the same page. It's one of the best things the series had going for it. I think that's what got the show buried. It was a downer a lot of times and some bits got boring. It took a few episodes for the heroes to rise up. They dealt with all kinds of issues. In the first episode, they saved people in a methane explosion at a factory. Spousal abuse case where both of them died, sadly. You'd think the wife was gonna do the right thing, get out of it only for the husband to suicide and her dying from a gunshot wound. The world's not always fair. Belle got really personal with that one. A stupid one where they had to get a cat out of a tree. It was either do that or have the lady report them for not helping. Ryan was like, I just got back on duty. I ain't being written over a freaking cat. So they used their fire hose to get it down. With their last job cabling down to a downed Cessna over a cliff, Belle and Ryan barely got the guy out in time. The problems got more crazier through the episodes. A garage roof beam collapsed onto a car, crushing a wife and husband who just got married. The husband died for his wife when they lifted the support beam off because all the blood was being held back from the pressure. A frat party going wrong real quick. An active shooting at a college. They had to get to people while being shot at. They even confronted the shooter. He was a disgruntled kid who went over the edge. They did a two-parter that was basically CSI before CSI even existed and arson was targeting places. Wick was being framed as the arsonist. Even the captain joined in to help some. That was their biggest episodes with the series finale getting the team exposed to a deadly virus. They were trapped in the isolated building trying to save everyone's lives. They almost died, but they got out of it. It was a decent series finale. At least it didn't give us a cliffhanger. The show just died off after two months like it was nothing. Besides Captain Durfee being underutilized, really, I can't give no other major complaints. They justified them going into deadly situations because they have other training. All three of them could serve as firefighters or even be detectives. They equally got episodes, which is pretty amazing when there were only eight. If you like drama, relationships, they got you. You love lives being saved, action and explosions, they got you there too. The series had a good balance. Each one had a journey. Bell had to confront his father. He wanted him to be a firefighter like him. He's another one who saw paramedics as a dead end job. Ryan, of course, her attachment issues, she had to learn the hard way. Wick, him being framed for those fires and being the rookie. He got less and less stupid. By the end, he never was late and didn't do that many stupid things. They were a real tight team. They felt very much like Stargate SG-1's team. That same type of family bond with so many different things going on. I think it's a gem. Just made in the wrong decade at the wrong time. Maybe if it was made after Smallville had come out, it might have gotten more seasons. Greg Wyden does good stuff. I really don't get why they didn't give him a bigger chance. Not even a half season. And Marjorie Monaghan always seems to get cursed when getting shows. At least it lasted two episodes longer than Space Rangers. What I'm really surprised is they did a huge two-parter when their season was that short. Everyone threw everything into it. It always puzzles me. Shows like this can get eight episodes and feel like they wrote 20 episodes, while other shows that get 20 episodes, with most of them being fillers or some junk story that makes no sense. It's just one of those weird things in entertainment. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on a lookout for obscured stuff.